I will move to recommend that House Bill 2788 be re-referred back to the Public Safety Finance and Policy Committee. Um, and then I understand you have an A2 amendment, Representative Agbaje. I will move the A2 amendment. Uh, if you could tell us about that amendment, please. Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, the A2 amendment makes some technical and operative changes. Um, basically, the amendment reinstates the newspaper publication requirement that was in current law. Uh, it creates the ability for the commission to recommend that the board hear an application in addition to the commission's recommendation to grant or deny it. Um, and then states clearly that board members can attend commission meetings and hear testimony and discussion should they want to. And finally, the amendment adds rulemaking authority for the commission to fast track certain applications for consideration by the board when the commission has unanimous support from all impacted parties. All right, uh, Representative Scott. Th thank you, Madam Chair. I do have a question um, for this amendment. D would this amendment match up this language to what it currently is in the Senate? Representative Agbaje. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Scott. I have not recently looked at the Senate language, so I would have to double check and get back to you. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right. All right uh, any further discussion to the A2? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. The motion prevails. The bill is now in the shape you would like. Uh, Representative Agbaje, please tell us about your bill. Uh, reminding folks that this bill is before us because of the records and subpoena section. Representative Agbaje, please proceed. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair and committee members. So I'll just briefly say this bill deals with the pardon process, um, which is an incredibly important executive function envisioned by the founders of this country and the state to recognize the importance of redemption and dignity for people who have turned their lives around and for whom justice requires another look at the far-reaching legal consequences of a criminal conviction. Um, so with that, I won't go much further into the modifications of the pardon process, but just for the committee's uh, purview, uh, the Clemency Review Commission structure created in this bill centers equity, access, and inclusion, and also expands the pardon process support services to ensure full, meaningful participation from all interested parties, including the victims. So for the sections under the jurisdiction of this committee, many of the same processes and requirements that exist for the board will now be required of the Clemency Review Commission. Mainly, uh, this bill maintains that the ability to access records and issue subpoena by the board, um, and that's extended to the commission, and it preserves the requirement to file a copy of any granted pardons with the court of jurisdiction, um, which is still a part of current law. It also maintains access to pardon records in both judicial proceedings and for peace offer officer applications. It also provides open meeting law provisions for the newly created clemency review and maintaining them for the board. It also preserves requirements to provide notice and opportunity to provide input from the judges and prosecutors involved in the underlying criminal conviction. Additionally, the bill creates new protections and processes for both board and commission proceedings by articulating the circumstances where closed meetings and victim confidentiality can be provided should a victim choose to provide a statement related to the pardon application and also requires language access services for applicants and victims. This bill is supported by several stakeholders, particularly victim coalitions and national clemency experts. There's also a uh, Fiscal note uh, for 986,000 for each fiscal year, um, which you'll see it as it's part of it, the inclusion in the governor's proposed budget for corrections. Um, and today I have two testifiers with me, and I'll start with uh, national clemency expert, Professor Mark Oslip. All right, Professor, please introduce yourself and proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. My name is Mark Osler. I'm a professor of law at the University of St. Thomas. I'm a former federal prosecutor, and I've been training future prosecutors and defense attorneys for the last 22 years here and at Baylor University. When I moved to Minnesota in 2010, it was in part because I was given the opportunity to open a clemency clinic, and a lot of my study and work in this field has been in partnership with my students. One of the things that I did several years ago was begin to attend the pardon hearings. And what I saw was a system that was very dramatic, but also had some problems, um, many of which deal with the subject matter of this committee. Um, the, the specific changes I'd like to highlight, just in brief, one is shifting from uh, the Department of Corrections to a new commission, data analysis and collection is going to be significant because we're going to have people who that's their job who specialize in that and it's going to enhance the ability to build up data so that that can be used in making future decisions also this adds a subpoena power for that new commission 
people wonder, well, why would they need that? Well, one reason would be to verify claims made by petitioners. And that's something that we see sometimes in pardon hearings now as, as needing to happen. In terms of participation by judges and prosecutors, this bill allows for that, uh, both at the commission level and at the pardon level, their voices will be heard as amended. That includes um, appearing in person at hearings. And finally, and importantly, this bill uh, enhances the participation of victims in the process. That not only do they have the ability and will be sought out uh, to give input into any decisions that are made, but for the first time there's going to be a focus on victim services. In other words, they'll be given the support that they need as they come and make their presentation. Uh, and I thank you. Yep, and I want to make sure we have time for your other testifier. Uh, so I believe we have uh, Mr. Tim Morin. Uh, if you can introduce yourself and proceed with your testimony. All right, I'm gonna try to keep it together a little better than last time. So, <laughs> so good morning, uh, Madam Beckenpin and my House of Legislators. My name is Tim Morin. Um, I come to you this morning to talk to you about the bill that is in front of us, <coughs> 2788. Um, I'm going to shorten this up because last time it got a little long but uh, and do the best that I can. But before I do, I want everybody in this room to understand the kind of man that I am and the kind of man that people that this process is failing. Um, um, I am a firefighter. I'm an EMT. I'm a husband and a father. Kids get me every time. <laughs> I'm a business owner who's, and I supply jobs to the community. All right. I mentor troubled youth. I speak to youth groups where show me your me my messages, show me your future, and I'll show you. Uh, show me your friends, and I'll show you your future, and how small decisions can turn into large decisions. I have mentored troubled uh, troubled youth. I have not been in any major trouble since my conviction. I haven't even had as much as a speeding ticket in the last ten years. I was awarded the Life uh, Chisago County Life Saving Award. I built. Homes for Habitat for Humanity. I have counseled individuals trying to find their place after serving time. I have served in soup kitchens. I'm a good Samaritan, a community, uh, excuse me, a good Samaritan of my, my communities, and lastly, I'm a man of faith. And again, I tell you this not to gloat, but to understand what kind of man this per, or person this, this bill is, or their current process is failing. The, right now, because of the things that it's held me back from doing, it, it does not, uh, my, prior conviction does not allow me from 19 years ago to be able to foster children, which my wife and I would like to do someday. Um, coach my kids sports. <laughs> or uh, mentor youth in a, in a uh, program due to my conviction. All right, so 19 years ago I made a mistake. I was an 18-year-old kid. I, I, uh, I ran with a group of troubled youth and uh, made some decisions that would not only affect me, but many others. Um, I don't discredit what happened that night. Um, and I've, I've lived with it since. And a pardon will not, a pardon will, or any other decisions will ever change the way this permanently affect me. Uh, 14 years ago, I decided, I'm gonna cut some of this out, but uh, 14 years ago, I decided that I was going to, to uh, try to attempt to, to, to get a pardon. Um, I began the process, this process is long and grueling. It brought back a lot of hurt and question if I was worthy. After submitting my entire records, BCA records, background records, all with the respective stamps and uh, from the respective, respective departments, I also provided details case as to what I've been up to, what I plan to do with my pardon, and what I've been, uh, why I deserve it. This all sounds easy, but it is much more involved than just that. Once I submitted it, I had to wait. I finally received the acceptance letter from the Board of Pardons. On the day, I remember feeling very nervous, I have more nervous than I have in a long time. I stood in the lobby waiting for the proceedings to begin. When it became my turn, I choked out what I had tried to draft, make it somewhat audible. My pastor spoke on my behalf, as did my business partner. Once that was all done, the board members asked their respective questions, and most of them about my case and my driving record when I was younger. Since being released, I, or driving record since being released, I answered the questions, and everyone seemed to be happy with the answers. The vote came up, and it became a vote of two to three. 
The one board member spoke up and said, I do not support this floor pardon. And uh, like that, the gravel was dropped and I was gone. I made it my way out of the courtroom and the victim's family hugged me and said, I'm sorry, did not work out. They showed up to support me. I remember feeling many feelings that day, but one that stood out the most was the feeling that if I got two out of three to support me and the victim's family not only support me, but took the time to show up and speak on my behalf, then shouldn't that hoard more weight than somebody than one person's vote? This process is difficult and I do not feel that many deserve it. But those who prove they deserve it through years of action that support it should have something to strive for. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you for your testimony. Um, are there any other members of the public wishing to testify? Right, we'll move on to member discussion. Uh, Representative Chair Moeller. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I just wanted to thank you um, for bringing this bill and to your testifiers and just point out that there is another um, letter that didn't make it in time for your packets, but it's from a city council member from one of the cities I represent um, who actually was able to receive a pardon, uh, but in support of um, what your bill is trying to do here today. So just wanted to make sure that it's posted online so that people have a chance to look at that too. Thank you. All right, thank you. Representative Scott. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And I'm just wondering, I know this is going back to public safety. I think a lot of times when people see Chapter 13, they think it's all to this committee, but it does address Chapter 13D, which is the open meeting law, and that is not the purview of our committee, that is state gov. And so um, I just want the record to reflect that this bill should go to state gov for those open meeting re reasons. So um, hopefully that will be the next motion um, from the Public Safety Committee <coughs> Is, is to go um, before the state gov uh, committee. Thank you. Uh, my understanding is that the chair of state gov waived. <coughs> okay. Um, so the motion before us uh, is to back to public safety. Closing comments, Representative Vegbadji. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, committee members. Um, you know, the pardon process is really important. We need to make sure that we're giving opportunities for people to seek redemption. Um, and I look forward to your support as we send this back to public safety. All right. Uh, I will renew my motion to recommend that House Bill 2788 as amended be re referred to the Public Safety Finance and Policy Committee. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. The motion prevails. <coughs>